Hi, my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding photography video, we're going to be improving the background of the shot. Oftentimes you'll be taking nice pictures and you may come up with a shot kind of like this where you have a nice shot of this couple. They're happy, good expressions, everything is nice, everything's nicely in focus, it's a good picture except for this thing right back there. This just ruins the whole shot. So let's see what we can do to improve this area here to make this a usable picture. Now before I do anything, I always make a copy of my background layer. Just drag it up to the new layer button like that. Hide the background. That gives me a protection. In case I mess something up, I can always go back to my original. That way it's always safe. Now up here, we're doing a couple of things. First, I want to mask out the couple. All I really care about is just this area right here, since we'll be fixing just this area over there. So I want to mask out the couple, that area, and then we'll put them on their own layer. We'll then come back to this layer and do some clone stamping to build in a new background in here on top of this background. Okay, let's see how this is done. So I'll zoom in just a little bit here. I think that's probably pretty good. Let me just stretch this out again. All I really care about is from about, about here up to, from here down, that's fine. Over here is fine, no problem in there. So I'm just going to do a quick mask around this. We'll then clean the mask up a little bit. So let's go over here to our lasso tools. And I'm going to grab the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll show you why in just a second. Now I'll begin making a selection. I'm going to be coming outside up in here so I don't need to be real exact out there. We're going to fix the hair in just a second but I do need to redo or rebuild the train in here because I just can't see where that is. So. I'm going to eyeball where I think that train should be and then just come down with this tool. Each time I click, it gives me a position. So I click and then kind of locks that position in. And then come down and click again. So I'm just going to eyeball where that train should be. And then once we're down here, it no longer matters. Now if I pull down to the bottom, it's going to automatically scroll like that. Again, down here isn't important. So I'm just going to quickly come outside and come around this just to be complete on that. So there we go. If you go outside the picture, that will automatically scroll the shot for you. There we go. And scroll up and come back to the beginning. There's our selection. Now, right in here in the hair, I want to improve the selection in that little bit. The rest of this doesn't matter. We're only going to be doing this over here, but I need to have this bit fixed. So let's zoom in a little bit on her hair. And then we're going to fix this selection. So go up to Select, come down to Refine Edge. There we go. Here's our Refine Edge mask. And then just using this Refine Edge tool right there, I'm going to paint right in here right along the edge and this tells Photoshop Elements where I want it to rethink what it's doing. And I can just come right around this edge and it will come in and it will improve the edge of my selection. And that's enough. I don't care about anything else out there actually because this is where I'm concerned with. It's this little bit and that all looks pretty nice. Now I want this to come out as a new layer with a layer mask. Choose OK. There's our new layer. Here's our layer mask. 
And there's a little bit right here. I can fix that. Here's our layer mask. Now notice that the white is what's showing, black is what's hidden. So I can fix this a little bit right here with just coming down here to our, our colors. I'll click on the default foreground background. So I have black. Let's grab the paintbrush. Click on the mask. Look for that cyan outline. Let's make sure we have the right color here. Let's check our background color. There we go. There's the problem. Click on the default foreground background. Make sure you have black in front. I want to have black as our color. And there we go. That's what I wanted. You don't need to be right up against her hair on this. Just reasonably close. I can clean up any other little, little spots in here. So there we go. That gives us our nice masked out figure. You can show the background again. So you can see there it is. So right there is the edge. So we have our mask with our figure in front. We can now hide that layer. And let's zoom out. There we go. And we're going to come in here and fake some stuff in the background. Now, we can just take some stuff over here, clone stamp from over here into this area. I can clone stamp these rocks over here into this area. Let's do some clone stamping and build a rock wall. I'll keep the edge here of this lamp and then we'll darken down that area back in there. And then that should do a good job for us. So let's get our clone stamp tool. And that's a bit too large, so I'm going to squeeze that in like that. Let's check our brush size. Bring it down a bit. That's better. So it's a 187. Soft edge, that's fine. And hold the Alt key down and let me make sure that I'm on the layer. There we go. Alt key down, click in here someplace, and let's just do a little bit of that clone stamp stuff here. Click over here, and I'll bring in a little bit of that rock wall there. And that's looking pretty good. And I'm just building in, just coming in here and just doing some fake stuff as you can see here. Making it look as if it was bricked up at some point in the past. There we go. I don't like that darkness down there. And I'll take some of this light stuff and come in here with that. And just to help blend that edge out. And just just little, you know, tap tap kind of thing. and build a little bit more of a rock wall look. Looks like it has a nice little brick area in there. Now, on this edge right here, you can try to firm that up a little bit if you want, or just bring it right up against that lamp. Just I think what I'll be doing, I'm just gonna grab right here, and I'll bring it against this edge. But I want a bit of a harder edge in there, so I'm going to make a quick selection and I'll bring it right down like that, down about there, and just finish that off. Let's try that, just get it exactly where I want it here. There we go, so I'll clone stamp in this edge, back to our clone stamp tool grab from there and just a little bit right up along that edge and let's just add some variation in here looks pretty good we'll just deselect that and that takes care of that wall edge for us now I need to darken down the area over here and I'm going to take some of this stuff and put it down there maybe a little bit of this in there just give us some detail in the background on that. Now I want to have this in behind this lamp, so I'll grab my lasso tool again. I'm just coming down right against the edge of the lamp here. I'm not worrying about being too careful on this. If I was you know, doing this for a client, I'd take more time on this selection and make it as perfect as possible. 
Now, I'm not going to be worrying about her figure here because we have that already taken care of with our saved layer up there. Okay, clone stamp tool and a little bit of this and just bring some of this down and get it in behind where her train is going to be like that. Maybe take a little bit of uh, some bush in here on the edge just to give it the effect of there being something kind of in behind there. Looks pretty good. Okay, select, deselect. So just kind of, you know, faking those areas. So that fixed that background. Now, let's show our foreground layer right there again. So because we had them on their own layer, it gives us a real nice clean effect. We've fixed that background. I've, I've hidden that dark area. And it's just kind of just a random look back here. No one's going to pay any attention to this stuff. That's nice thing because they're going to be looking at this foreground. Okay, let's just zoom out a little bit here. We'll zoom out. There we go. There's our our picture with the cleaned up background. Now you can take this further if you want to. In a different video, I'll be taking this and doing a soft focus on the background, which will improve that even more. But this is the main bit in here. The last thing you may want to do right down there, see how that's kind of light in there and it's, it's just blending in with her dress. Maybe you want to darken down that area. So go over here, we're still in our background layer. Let me hide the foreground in here. I can even leave it on at this point, just on the background layer. And I want to darken that area down. So go over here is this little kind of a sponge tool thing. And then, oh, wrong, there we go, that's what I want. That's what I was looking for, there's the sponge I was thinking of. You want this hand right there. This is the burn tool. This will be darkening things down. So, I have a fairly large brush. As you can see, this one is 407 pixels. Exposure of 15%, so fairly soft exposure. And I'm just going to tap in here with this. Like that. And that just darkens down the picture. And I'll just, just do a few taps in behind there, darken that background down a little bit in there just to help separate from the foreground. And that's why I made that real careful selection along the edge of the train down here, kind of you know, guessing where it should be, so that I could do this and we would then have that nice edge. So there we go. A little bit of fakery in there to kind of repair an overly bright background so that the couple then pops out into the foreground. So there it is, fixing the background. All right, let's now just compare this before and after. Here's our after. And let's see if we can bring our background. There we go. There's the before. That's with that really bright background in there. It just kind of ruins the picture. There's the after. After we've gone in and done a little bit of photo fakery to hide that white area. So as you can see, you don't have to do a whole lot really. It's just a, a matter of going in and hiding the problem area. And because it's just, just rock and so forth on this rock wall, no one's going to be looking at that and paying real close attention to what's going on there, especially because we have this foreground, very important couple for our picture. So there's the before, there's the after. The real trick here on this whole process, aside from just doing just some careful clone stamp work, the real trick is making sure that you do that mask ahead of time up here where you mask the couple out. That allows you to get in there and you know be real careful on your adjustments and not worry about the edge of the couple because you've already protected those on their own safe layer up above. Okay, there it is. Repairing the background. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.